Folks, I wanted to give a two-week review based on what you are seeing on the screen, using it as a daily driver for work, making some content, trying to play Dota 2, because that's really the only game I play, maybe a little bit of League of Legends, and my thoughts coming from a Windows device. So straight off the bat, I don't know if this is a Mac OS issue, but I always found that my Logitech mouses or any Bluetooth mouse is just significantly slower and has an input delay compared to when I use it on Windows. And the only way to get around this is to use the USB unified controller. So basically you have to plug it into USB. Now, when it comes to some desktop audio, so for my personal uses, I need to kind of record content. I could do this easily on a Windows machine and Mac OS. But with this, yep, it's not too difficult. There's free software. You have to get the black hole and then create this multi-output device. But then afterwards, you're able to get game content recorded. So, you know, with video game reviews and stuff like that, um, I think sometimes you can see here if I start a bot, bot match, some reviewers will say, hey, you get good performance. I think for most people, if you want the device with portability, you should just at least test it in a 14-day window. Uh, because from my experience, um, you know, I played Turbo. I showed that I was getting like 30 FPS with some settings down. But I've seen a lot of reviewers say, oh, look, good graphics all the way maxed out. Um, but it ends up just being a bot game. And the, the, there's something up with like Mac OS or when you're... I've, I've tried to research it. There's a Reddit thread that says you need to be plugged into Ethernet to get rid of this. But you can see the ping here is zero. 60 FPS. I'm like, oh, damn. Let's go, boys. Let's turn up the settings. Let's get lit. Let's just crank everything up. It's going to be, this is it. This is the portable gaming machine that everyone wanted. Um, you hit apply to these settings. And basically, it's like, whoa, it's still 60 FPS. It looks just like my Windows laptop. Um, but basically, cutting it to the long story short, as soon as you get into a game, and you can see this when watching or even playing Turbo, uh, you might want to reconsider your purpose if you know if you play a lot of video games or at least like to play casually and enjoy your experience. Basically, you're gonna wanna cancel finding your Turbo match. Um, I don't know if you guys are casuals like me and don't play ranked and just like the late game Dota experience. But you can see here when we watch a match, it's a similar experience in playing Turbo. You can check out my other video where I did play a Turbo match. All of a sudden, that smooth 60 FPS is now getting effed up by um, you know some of these effects. Go drops down to 42. I've personally been trying to find that my experience is that every time I use the scroll, like I move the map around, you get some lag. So now it's like, well, crap! I can't play an enjoyable Dota experience. I got to turn these settings back down. This is this is unacceptable. You're basically just going to find that you're going to keep on changing the settings until uh, <laughs> there's nothing you do. Even if you go to lowest settings, it's just going to be bad. Here on what's showing on screen is a particular fight. You can see these drops down to even 24 and 14. I mean, something you wouldn't even get from like an $800 gaming laptop running on Intel XE. Um, just being honest with you, you could get, it, like, you don't even need to get the Dell XPS 13 Plus. But as soon as I see that crap, I'm just rage quitting out of the game. <laughs> Now, I talked about in other videos, you can see here where we try to play, you know, stay up with the crowd. There's a part of gaming where it's a gaming community. You want to play what everyone else is playing and posting on our gaming on Reddit. You can't even run DX12 supported games right now. And even if you try some hacks like running it in DX11, it still doesn't run. You check that full video out of some of the games I tested and basically the, the woes, so to speak, of, of being a gamer and trying to game on Mac. Of course, all Reddit and all the forums will laugh at you for trying to game on the Mac. But yeah, it's still pretty bad. If you are committed to playing some games that are supported with DX11 or Windows native games, just know that you'll have to install Parallels or Crossover, and you'll have to do some adjustments um, with Parallels at least to do mouse acceleration. But um, you know, like some of the reviewers said, you, you may be surprised I'm getting like 14 FPS. What they're showcasing is a cracked version of GTA 5, which is the way to kind of get the FPS up. So I know every video reviewer says it, but video editing, chef's kiss, it's real great, at least for being a device. You don't even need the version I have, which is the 10 core one terabyte version. You could go ahead and just get the base model. And if you're just pumping out casual videos, maybe making Instagram reels or 
uh, I don't even know, just making very quick edits. This is a good device. OBS works fine also for recording calls and making transcriptions. Of course, I've shown that workflow before using the Temi transcription service, or you can even plug into AWS and it's just better to get, I'd rather just record a meeting and, and then just read the transcript and kind of focus on what everyone's saying. But that aside, editing is real smooth, better than my G15. And then one thing I do want to note is that if you record on an iPhone, um, you know, some people, most people, serious YouTubers do DSLR. If you're a casual user, you might do iPhone. The Mac is actually the best way to get some content out. So I have the iPhone 13 Pro and you just airdrop it, which is significantly faster than plugging in with a USB because for some reason you only get two point USB 2.0 speeds with iPhone, but airdrop, you could send those files quicker. And then here you can see I was making this portrait video, which is some of the content you've seen uh, for the B-roll footage. And, and I think it's turned out pretty well compared to my A6000. Um, especially since I'm about to be traveling in Europe, this could be a more compact setup of just having, if I make, if I make content, I'll probably just record nature videos and stuff like that. It's a good way to just showcase, um, you know, con uh, instead of bringing my A6000 as simple as drag and drop and get that footage in. So pretty good experience, uh, coming from a native Apple ecosystem. So coming now in, I guess, two weeks after buying would i buy this device i would but i wouldn't get what i got i got 10 core one terabyte um 16 gigabyte i would literally just get the base version the only reason i wanted to experiment with this was like hey could i get a lightweight device that i could play dota 2 on and i mean if, if you're playing league you could get this because league works okay i mean like 60 fps i don't notice any lag but dota has significant lag in my opinion especially when scrolling that just throws off the gaming experience um, so I'm just going to get the base model, travel Europe with this, and, you know, just work remotely. 10-hour battery life on Teams and WebEx tested over two weeks. I've literally not plugged in, worked from my couch, uh, you know, been on Teams and WebEx, and it's been, it's been fine, and, and recorded on OBS at the same time. No need to plug in, so that's pretty amazing. That will help if I'm going backpacking in Europe and need to work from a coffee shop for eight hours. So overall, hope you guys enjoyed my take on this. Um, let me know if you, what config or what device you're planning on getting. I know a lot of people want the M1, say this or the M1 Pro. I'm just going to go with the baseline for me personally. Peace.